When we play face, I mean, I'm hoping we can come out with a win. I believe we can. What makes Fnatic a good team is definitely their search and destroy. I just feel like that search and destroy is very, very good. They play it very consistently and very well with each other. They have good chemistry on that. FaZe is such a good team because they've been a team for so long. I mean, two years now. Longest standing team within Call of Duty as a collective four. So I think if we can just play our game in the respawns and just kind of control the pace of the game and win those, then kind of going with some momentum into the search and destroy match, I think we could take that as well. And once we do that, I think we'll have uh, the series pretty locked down. Beating FaZe will actually give us a big boost coming out of the group because not many people, as I say, are expecting us to beat them. So if you chalk up games and say we should beat these here and lose there, getting a win against FaZe would be quite big because then it would give us that extra win that we didn't really think we'd have. Fantastic, of course, to hear from both of our two teams. But uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the first matchup of the day before we get into it. Uh, of course, uh, Aix, I kind of want to get your opinions here. In terms of Fnatic on the day, right? If they start off with a 1-0, you get that win against FaZe, how crucial is that going to be for, for their week two? I mean, if they get that first win against FaZe, uh, it's gonna, I think it, that solidifies them for the top two spot, to be honest. Because today is all about going 2-0. If you go 2-0 on that first day, you are set for the entire, entire weekend almost. Um, it's really going to come down to that first hard point. You know, they need to win that game one. I think game two is probably in the bag for them. Uh, looking back at, you know, I think it was Dallas or Paris maybe, that Fnatic definitely, they crushed SND, they won 6-3 yep. against FaZe. Um, I think SND, they're, they're going to be confident in it. If they can get that game one in the bag for them, they'll be set for the day. Is it definitely that game one for you, TP, or is it potentially maybe trying to steal the uplink? I know uplink, they've had their, they've had their moments, to, to be completely frank, but, I mean, beating FaZe in a hard point, is that going to be... Possible for, for Fnatic, in your opinion? It's possible, just not very likely, to be quite honest. I, I think Fnatic, best chance is to win one of those closer quarter hard points if maybe Scraps or Wuskins just has a crazy map there. But overall, this is going to be te a team, when they go up against these top-tier competitors, it's going to be a map five win a lot of the time for them. I don't think they're quite consistent enough in all of the game types to, to really take series so easily. Okay. So you have to give it to FaZe first, but... Just this group in general, I, I, you know, some of the matches we saw last weekend were a bit more clear cut. I think this whole group is going to be close. I mean, here is a look at our maps, Merc. I mean, you're, you're kind of shaking your head a, a little bit there. Is this map set potentially uh, beneficial for FaZe when you look at it? Of course, you know, Aix mentioned the 6 3 win on Crush Rest indeed. That isn't in the cycle. How does this one pan out in your opinion? I, I think it benefits FaZe heavily. And I think those first, th first three maps, I think this is a 3 0. If it goes wow. to game four, I think that is what, sort of what Teep was talking about. I think that's a hard point where it's a little bit bit more scrappy it's throwback but you have to talk about the firepower on, on phase you have attached zuma these guys they love playing quick it's gonna be very difficult for Fnatic to take this one definitely will well that's gonna be everything from the studio for now we can send it over to our beautiful casters today i changed it just for you courage it's courage <laughs> and maven thank you boys incredible stuff as we get ready for our first match here of the cwl global pro league week two how are you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling fantastic. Already the vibe's great in this venue. The players, a lot more scrimming this week and eights going on in these lobbies. The big difference, actually, some of these teams a little bit more practiced here at the venue itself because Millennium is here. They're already out yeah. here. They're not even playing this week, but they've been here getting some practice in with squads. It's been fun to watch. But either way, we are ready now for, I believe, the blue group week two of the CWL Global Pro League. How you feeling? You look, look at you looking all nice and dapper. Good. Oh, the, the black on black. Ooh. I'm ready to go. But Slight this black. is uh, this is going to be fun. But I, you know, you, you hear a lot about Phase. Everyone's going to be shocked if they don't take this group. But looking at Fnatic, is this a tough matchup? Yes. But yeah. Fnatic, you know, they proved they can you know hang with top EU teams after they got third at Birmingham. But what what I think surprised me the most and impressed me, looking back to Dallas, you know, in pool play, they actually beat Luminosity in four games. So they yes. took they took two respawns off of a team that you kind of consider a respawn juggernaut juggernaut squad. So this is. Uh, it's doable. Do I think the Fnatic are going to win this series? No, no, I do not. But you've got some very talented players here. Ooh, we're already feeling in. good coming in. I love this. We're already in the game. FaZe Clan versus Fnatic. NA versus EU. Some very experienced players on the side of FaZe. Some up-and-comers for Fnatic. And I, I did get a chance to speak to these two teams prior to this matchup. The one thing I heard from Clay, Fnatic have to strike early. They have to take some maps in this first first two games if they really want any chance in this series because we know how weak of an uplink team they truly are. And you got to think about the, uh, the the great thing for the uh, every team outside of FaZe. If you get a victory over FaZe, I mean, how well does that set you up for the rest of the weekend? Beating FaZe could be your ticket to getting into the top two. But let's hop over to Enable. I mean, he's been playing so, so well 
over the past couple of months. The guy has been lights out, trying to play behind his teammates, baiting one below, able to find the kill before he gets picked up in the loading. Nice start for FaZe, but Fnatic now in control, pal. I think what we've seen from Enable as well is really what made his stock rise in competitive Call of Duty early on in this transition over. Especially when you think of the likes of Advanced Warfare, when FaZe were doing so well, he was arguably the most consistent player through many events oh, that yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you could continually rely on Enable for this team is when FaZe found themselves winning championships. Well, looking back at this, this is big for Tommy because it's an early setup for FaZe, but they give up a lot of time to Fnatic at the end there. Tommy wrapping around the back has a chance to disrupt, but the kill is traded out. And now you see the red arrow. You saw four and two. They're spawning basically that back hanger. They've got control of the spawns. They're looking to lock down a lot of time here in cell block, but it's Sunny B finding an intro kill, not able to gun Clayster as well. Speaking of Clay, he's four and one. He's on a two streak. Starting nice here with the NV4, but it's Tommy inside with a big two piece, and that could be the break. And Abel's going to be the lone man here, and you see FaZe now spawning out. Excellent oh, yeah. stuff from Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic still keeping pressure on this hard point. Attach does get the cleanup, but I do want to bring up FaZe. Have some tricks up their sleeve this weekend. I won't talk about it yet, but I saw some things when they were warming up, potentially on this map as well. Some of these new tools can come into play. 15 seconds remaining on this cell block hard point. Fnatic should get the rest of the time, but if you see, FaZe already in rotation towards this bulldozer hill. Yeah, this is a map where early rotations are key, and you saw with about 20 seconds or so, FaZe had rotated out, set up for cell block. Same can be said here for the second hard point. Despite the fact that a team kill comes in for attach, it's an early setup for FaZe, and FaZe should be able to swing back into this game quickly, but you can't let what happened last time happen. Fnatic broke that, what, basically the second, well, yeah. kind of the first try they actually get through as Tommy opened things up. It was Tommy's first kill on the back side of the map that really really helped open the door, draw some attention towards that back area in which FaZe then got collapsed on. But right now, Sunny B with the entry kill, unable just trying to stay alive. You see him using this bulldozer for cover. He doesn't have much wow. teammates to help around him, but it's unable to in all the work. It's what makes him one of the better players in competitive Call of Duty. We talked about what the man has been doing as of late. There's the four times multi-kill. And the redhead's fully streaked out. He picks up the entire squad, and he's on a six streak. And this is why he's so valuable to the team, because not only is he finding big kills, but they're inside of the hard point. Another kill comes through. The streak up to seven, picking up an assist as well. And him being the camo player, that's key as well, working towards that oh-so-valuable payload. Not a single second on that hard point for Fnatic. Even more importantly, Clayster wins the one-on-one -on -one gunfight in the back of the map. Unable now on an eight streak phase, fully taking over this game. Enable is not missing right now, man. He is beaming right now. He's also leading his side in hard point time. He does the damage of the objective. He picks it up with the slang as well. And you can see on X-ray, there's more looking to push him. But he's holding these back, you know, helipad and snow street spawns, pushing towards middle. Guns another. Not missing any bullets. The streak is the double digits before finally Sunny B slows him down. 15 and 4. What a start from him. We're already back up the spot. He's picking up more kills. Phase with 90 seconds in a row on the last two hills. At the end of it all, it should be a 100 second swing. This game escalated quite quickly if you're on the side of Fnatic, and the big reason why. The twin brothers, Wuskin and Scraps, a combined 6 and 20 in this map. And this is one where, I, I mean, we've seen FaZe destroy multiple teams on this map. And yes. that's why I think when Merck looked at it, he's like, this this looks like a 3-0. Because you need Fnatic to get out to a hot start, but FaZe Clan can bury you. But remember, this is a team that at times, FaZe Clan, you know, sometimes they get talked about, you know, maybe playing for the stats a little bit too much. They don't bury teams when they can. Yeah. I know that was a big one in Hardpoint last year that we talked about a lot. Can they close it out and just dismantle Fnatic? in this game one and just put the series away. They most certainly can try right here. Scraps just getting inside the hard point. Only four kills to his name after, what, five hills in this game? Averaging less than one kill per hill. Not a recipe for success for this young player. He's going to try to challenge whoever he can. Unfortunately, two right in front of him. That's a quick cleanup there for FaZe Clan as the kill feed still remains red for the majority of this game. Yeah, when you have Enable slaying like he was earlier, he's continuing to do so. If they're going to get the early rotations and he's not missing like that, this is a map where the early rotation is going to pay off. You're going to pick up 40, 50 seconds on some of these hard points. This next rotation is huge. Remember, it was Tommy that was able to get him behind last time. Now it's Wuskin, but they know he's there. Attach finds the kill. It's going to be Attach still playing inside cell block as he will deal with players pushing on through. Attach finds one more before, before falling. Enable now going to try and pick up the slack as he still has all these streaks to work with. Yeah, and it's just, just away from camo. A great grenade, too, in the back of the map from Clayster. Spots where Wuskin was 
Once that kill comes in from FaZe, and look at now where the spawns are for Fnatic. FaZe are looking to get another full 60 on this hard point, and they can do so right now. They've got the Scarabs as well watching these lanes. They should call out all four. Can Fnatic break on through? The first kill from Clayster. They're going one by one. Clay's going to keep milking them on this wall run right now. Nearly gets the four times multi kill. <laughs> I, I think I could have gotten those three kills. Yeah. You can't go in a guy like Clayster one by one by one. Now you have him with streaks. Enable has streaks to work with. You're 35 and 14. If you look at Clayster and Enable right now, those two guys carrying the way in the slang. This has been a fantastic first map effort from Clayster. I mean, that engagement right there kind of sums up from what we've seen so far from Fnatic. In a full rotation of hills, they got 30 seconds, Maven, from that last Selbach hard point. Rough to see. Now FaZe going for the retake. Trying to lead with Zuma. Unfortunately, needed the AR to be watching over him. Some aggressive play from Wuskin, too, does not pay off. Now the streak's coming in. There's only one player up here for Fnatic, and it's Tommy coming off the spawn. A clean break from FaZe Clan. That's what the streaks are going to do, right? Yep. You know, if you ever think for a second, that's why you can't give them up so early like Fnatic did, because was that a hard point that they got rotated too early and could have maybe picked up like 60 seconds, could have had a perfect hold? They still do a pretty solid job, but when you have the streaks, it gets them out for a while, and what could have been 40 or so points gets cut down, but they're actually going to get the remaining 20 seconds here, but this key rotation is going to be huge. Set up first in commissary is going to be Tommy. He's ready to go with the end before a solid nade across is going to back them up for the time being but he needs help and there the streaks again man it's the first entry kill two hard points in a row forcing Fnatic into awkward positions phase again get the break and the setup now for commissary they don't even have the back spawns and because they don't enable it's basically watching the flank from this top showers area unfortunately tommy the quick reaction time does cut him down Faze now being pushed from three different areas. Can they win the engagement? Attached to stay on the map, use the FTL jump. One more player is there. It's Wuskin winning the engagement. And if you can hold this here, you're slowly climbing back into it. Honestly, I think Fnatic just started a little bit slow, but the problem is, I mean, if it weren't for streaks, if you didn't give up so many, yeah. you might be able to come back in this game. We've seen comebacks on Breakout happen all the time. Go to Clayster if we can. If we can swap on over to Clayster real quick, here is one of the strategies. He got this one from our cities. They tossed down the thermal inside the smokes inside the hard point and what they try to do is they have clayster watch this outer wall run and watch out for players to hit middle map unfortunately whiffing left and right with this thermal it doesn't work out there and i'm looking over mercs already judging him in the scrims i was watching earlier it was way more impactful than that i think they were just trying to show it off and i don't even know if that's the right idea to bring it out wait there. wait wait jack this game is not over wasket started so slow scrap still struggling but he's now on a five streak looking to pick up a six he's 14 and 18. he's come alive and look how close he is to streaks if you get some streaks to work with maybe you give yourselves a chance but phase looking to close things down here at the top central hut Wuskin pushing, loading, scraps his brother, picking up a couple of kills. He now gets the points for that, so he's going to have the Trinity Rockets. There's the bombardment. Fnatic is not out of this. We see comebacks here all the time oh. in the EU squad looking to get it done. Definitely not one thing to keep in mind of, though. Phase just 17 seconds from winning. Fnatic cannot put any focus towards these new spawns. They're looking to go ahead and collapse for the side of Phase. Already it's enabled with the first blood. Look at the red arrows pushing towards this middle hard point. They're not even gar grabbing any time as of yet. There's still one player there. The problem is, too, when you rotate here, I mean, cell block's not somewhere where they're going to be able to streak them out to get them out of the hard no. point, right? You're going to have to get it done with gun up. So first man back, Tommy, like we saw through the first set. In comes the streaks from Wuskin, trying push. to break in the back, but you got to go. There's the first kill. Tags up a teammate, but still looking to get the break. They fly in, two in the back. It's attached, locking it down, but Scraps still here to trade the kills. Still no payloads available Ooh. for either team. Scraps them with the two-piece. He's got one health from his teammate, another pushing the side door. Just stay alive. You're very, very weak right now. Phase just 10 seconds from winning. Still Fnatic down by 50. It would have to be one of the best comebacks I've seen in Infinite Warfare if they want to make this one happen. Scraps trying to stay alive. Phase going for their biggest push yet. And remember, Scraps still has, or sorry, Wuskin still has a, a Trinity, Trinity Rocket to work with, but might not matter. Wuskin has to stay Whoa! alive here. He's still able to find two. Ducked into the corner. There's the Trinity we spoke about. He's able to keep Fnatic in this game. It gets him to the 215 or Let's go to the top. No, he's calling point. it a streak. He gets caught. Phase can win off this right oh now. God. Enable has one 1v1 gunfight to win. It's Wuskin there. He cleans it on up, but look, no one's near the new hard point. This one really should 
do it. I don't think Fnatic will get anybody here in time. They're hovering this last streak, which could buy enough time. This is such a smart play. The Trinity comes into play. Fnatic get four dead on phase. We are not done yet. The Centurion now dropped down. We might be seeing a massive collapse of one of North America's best. Let's stick with Sunny B here. He's in the close corner, looking to make plays. Sees one going up over the top. That's his teammate to the left. One flies in front. There's the assist. Inside research. Not able to do it, but Wuskin in the back gets gunned. That's a gunfight you need to do, but Tommy's still here. Tommy's got two. Tommy's got one. What? The comeback still alive. They can win it here. Will face throw map one. Welcome to week two of the Global Pro League, folks. The break on in isn't enough. Clayster now dead. Fnatic still pushing in. FaZe have one final chance, 248 to 241. Zuma just get through, picks up one. There's one in the close corner. He actually is able to find a couple of kills there, but Fnatic they have to can't win. They can't win it. They can't no. win it. They got to rotate. It's Wuska oh. on the side, but FaZe able to sneak in there and pull off the victory. Why was that that close? Why was that that close? Our analysts are all on their feet watching the end of that map. Unfortunately, Fnatic, they only have one player alive in the hard point. They start sending a, their last guy off spawn to rotate to the new hill. FaZe only needing two seconds are able to I, close it out. I wasn't even thinking about Graveyard that far. Oh, I was look looking, at Tommy. Look at Tommy. He knows. I was looking down at the rotation to Commissary because I knew I knew Fnatic couldn't get it done, but it's the clutch kill coming in from Attach, and they just need those two ticks. I was I was so focused on the next hard point. Dude, I'm shaking right now. I'm shaking. <laughs> what a way to start. Clayster's like, I tried to bring out a Thermal MV4. Didn't really do anything for the team. Woo, that, that right there is why so many people are excited about this blue group, folks. Anyone, anyone could win some of these respawns. Fnatic, props to you guys not going out of it, especially with how slow of a start Wuskin and Scraps had. We said they were 6-20. and 20. Wuskin turns around, gets those streaks, hovers them as well. Both teams making so many good plays. And that's, you know, I brought it up like middle of the map. This is something we've seen plague phase at times. Yep. They outslay, they outslay. Game still end up being very, very close. And it was it was a couple things. I think phase let it slip away a little bit. But yes. it was also the fact that Fnatic, you know, Wuskin was horrendous to start the map. At one point, what, what was he, 3 and 10, yep. something like that, to kick it off? He really came alive in Scraps, who was awful. All map, you saw with a couple big two pieces down the stretch, but it just wasn't enough. North America prevails in map one. Who narrowly though. Five seconds the difference there, 250 to 245. That is a map that I cannot wait to hear. <laughs> Merc, TP, and Aches break down. Folks, this is the CWL Global Pro League. This is what it's all about, baby. Already week two, kicking off the right way. I, I didn't even know what to look at with my eyes in the final seconds. I'm like, minimap, no, can he get the kill? We're hopping back and yeah. forth. That was insane. Welcome to the CWL Global Pro League Group Blue. This is a beautiful start. And now this is where the question comes in. Fnatic saving grace as a team, especially at those recent events where they did place well, was search and destroy. Wuskin had had some incredible maps sometimes, though, can fall short is this arguably a must-win map for them in this best of five? Yes. Yeah, they, they, they need to win this search. I mean, uh, God, man, if Fnatic could have taken that game one, this is such a winnable series. Like, if you had, if you were an odds maker, right, you're yeah. looking at their chance to win, after dropping that, it drops drastically. God, they were close. But you got to think back. I mean, Fnatic, historically, uh, you know, since this team has come about, they've been solid at search and destroy. You think back to, to Paris, when the only team they actually dropped a search to was FaZe. Yeah. So FaZe is definitely a team that can fight with them. This is the scariest S&D group we've got. We've been talking a lot about phase let's see how they made it to this point to the global pro league phase clan have had their same roster across three different call of duty titles now and it's for one reason it just simply works with multiple championships under their belts as a team clayster zuma attach and enable have gone through it all as a lineup this team has all the necessary ingredients to be successful chemistry experience they have a fantastic coach, but they have yet to show the will to win against top teams. This team is itching to secure their first major championship in 18 months. FaZe has found form after an abysmal season last title by securing third place at the CWL Vegas Open. Throughout the year to this point, they have been fantastic in our online 2K tournaments with some of the more consistent placings among the top teams. FaZe Clan take map number one, 250 to 241. FaZe continue to cruise until CWL Atlanta Open, where their troubles against two certain teams began, E-United and Optic Gaming. These were the only two teams to beat FaZe at this event. This theme continued across the next two major events as well. 
Faze placed top six at the CWL Atlanta Open, top two at CWL Paris, and top three at CWL Dallas Open. These consistent land placings secured Faze the third seed in the North American Pro Point Battle. There is no doubt that FaZe is the third best team in competitive Call of Duty. They have won their last 16 series versus teams that are not Optic Gaming and EU Night at the last three major LAN events. If we were to define FaZe Clan up until this point, it is that statistic. As of late, Enable has been their standout player and the MVP for this squad. He had the number six overall KD at Dallas with a 1.17, and with the recent improvements in their in-game communication, FaZe are coming into the Global Pro League well prepared. If they can work on their uplink and search and destroy game, then expect FaZe to make a push for another major championship. A little bit earlier, he just gets over, he tosses, and there it is! Tune in April 28th to the 30th to see how FaZe Clan performs in stage one of the CWL Global Pro League. That's a uh, scary statistic if you're fanatic when you hear FaZe Clan 16-0 against teams that are not Optic and United over the last three major events. And after how that map won was, how do you bounce back here? I mean, it's pretty crazy to think that that is not only that stat, that, that's from like February that started. It's almost May now in the Infinite Warfare season. FaZe have been very, very consistent. And I, I talked to the guys a little bit. We were doing some interviews on Media Day. And, uh, you know, I asked Clay just about, not, not that stat specifically, but the fact that, you know, right now they're kind of widely considered the third best team with the United and Optic kind of the clear cut number two. And he's like, I, I don't, he's like, I don't agree with that. You know, we, we beat, uh, I think it was winner's round two or winner's semi. Uh, they beat United the first time they played. Yes. They had very close maps the second time they played. Because if you don't realize how close we actually are to EU United, I, I think the one difference that in most people's eyes is just United has played Optic very, very tough, whereas FaZe recently hasn't. There have been some close maps, yeah. but overall they've been kind of getting thumped in that in that matchup. There's a reason why more, more and more people have started to say that the real rivalry in competitive Call of Duty right now, instead of an Optic phase, it's more Optic versus EU United. But either way, that's besides the point. The match we have here, Fnatic versus FaZe, Enable already <laughs> bringing out the gestures, spinning the ball on his finger as we get ready for map number two. Hopefully it's as close as that first hill. And Enable had an incredible start to that game. Streaked out so early, that was the difference. I mean, you think about the streaks being big. There's a team kill from Fnatic in the final hard point that is so, so costly. Those are the mistakes you can't make if you're going to beat some of North America's best. And already, look at the aggression from Tommy right towards C2, pushing right through, getting that first blood. Phase changing things up, immediately going right towards A on the first offensive round. Well, they've set up, they've locked down bridge, but they are down a man. What can they do? It's Enable finding a kill inside, also getting away. Good job playing his life. He turns into a 3v3. There is one trailing him inside curb. A couple inside hotel as well as Enable has a close one, but it scraps, able to get the better of him. And now there's a, an awkward pinch coming in. Thankfully, Clayster does clear out one side of the map. Zuma holds the angle, potentially could clean up the both. Only 15 seconds left. Clayster knows when he has to check next. And this might actually be quite, quite close for Clayster. Sunny B still on this bomb. Does Clay get there in time? It's going to be down to the final second. Does Clay get the shots? And yes, Ooh. he does. Oh my God. So unnecessarily close, but Clay, time get out quite well. Oh, this, this series. <laughs> After that game one, this is the round one we get. And I think uh, he may have missed just like a bullet there. It looked, it looked closer than it needed to be for just a second, right? Thought maybe he was going to get it, but the veteran, Clayster able to close it out. Now, we'll hop in around two and see what Fnatic is able to do. And now, uh, let's talk a little bit, uh, the, you know, the spawns changed a little bit. The map's uh, mixed up a little bit. Maybe if there's new viewers here, kind of talk about how this map plays now for the offense. This is a perfect example. Typically, for the side uh, of offense, they can push right down this lower street, get there before they can be challenged from that lower arch, arch area or that top bedroom window, and really take control of that B site. Instead, there you just saw, they had to fall back. They couldn't even do their push anymore. Thankfully for them, though, they've had two players drop one shot and not get first blooded in this round, but an awkward start already for Fnatic on this offensive play. That's why over the course of the GPL, you may be seeing some more A hits, right? Some more activity around Bridge, but it is Sunny B finding the opening kill here. On to attach, one to his left. The kills go back and forth. It's a 3v3 now. We'll check out what Tommy is able to do as he's playing by the close tank. Tommy just gonna go ahead and wait things on out. Now in a three versus three. Wuskid as well, pushing up that top bridge side. Did he get the sights on one player in curb? I do believe so. And yeah, he's spotting two pushing 
Gets the first kill. There's Clayster as nice well. Shot. This is why he's so good at Search and Destroy, Maven. He has been a superstar in Search and Destroy, but now it's on the Game 1 Phenom. Enable had a monster performance. He's got an e red though. When you're playing at Bridge, it can be so, so difficult to find gunfights with so little time here and a player all the way back in Grave. I have no idea how he gets this done. Doesn't check the close corner. Not enough time to work with, and that's going to be a tying up round going to Fnatic. Even the trigger discipline right there by the player on Fnatic who is sitting inside Curb, calls it out, goes to to tail the uh, ch basically just chase him right around that wall. Waskin cleans up three that round. Beautiful stuff from him to open up that site for the side of Fnatic. And they're going to need every bit of Waskin here. Again, slow start to game one, but he really, really picked it up and came alive around the midway point of that game. And now looking brilliant here in the search and destroy. You've already got three kills for Waskin but it's now going to be an Able and crew back to offense for FaZe Clan. And I want to see how Fnatic changed things up with FaZe again showing all their cards towards this A site. What is their reaction? Last time they tried to flood through Hotel, and it was Tommy who got first blood this time around, though. Look at Zuma already trying to play spoiler towards his back bridge side. You know, I talked a little bit with uh, Zuma and his teammates, too, about why. I was thinking, like, Zuma seems to be just significantly better as the year goes on. Like, think at the end of Ghost, end of AW, how strong he was. He's a guy that plays fast and plays around timings, and those timings become a lot easier to read as the game you, know, you get further into the year. It was actually sharp and nameless who I spoke to a lot about that in my first year of ca casting, which was Advanced Warfare. We were actually out in London for one of the European events, and they were bringing up how it's incredible how that just happens for him. It's like he just kicks it into gear slowly but surely. Well, he just gets better and better as a player, and we're getting towards that time of the year now. Well, think about it. The game gets faster and faster. You see it go from a less AR-heavy game, more sub-heavy, typically, historically, for Call of Duty. Typically, historically. That was an odd sentence. But they, uh, Zuma just, man, those timings become easier. You, you know, you hit flank so frequently. You're so aggressive on search and destroy. Always that guy, you know, finding first bloods, getting first blooded. He really finds his rhythm later in the year, but it's Waskin now with another first blood for his side as he finds his fourth kill. And look, this time FaZe kind of put all their eggs in one basket towards this bridge area, and Fnatic just read it like a book, get the quick plant down at B, and, and now FaZe are left in a really awkward position. Look at how far spread out Fnatic are on the minimap. And they're going to be set up for this push around the back from Enable. It's not going to be a gunfight you're going to win. It's Waskin with another. Waskin working on the ace. He's found three. If he picks up Clay, that's every kill for Waskin. He already has a three kill round. Can he find a four kill? That'd be seven. All seven of his kills in two rounds of play. He has been incredible. And there's the final one. Waskin with the ace. And we saw it all from the phase POV. Oh, yeah. As they lost gunfight after gunfight. Look at the smiles there. The thermal sniper coming into play makes it look easy. And, and, and honestly, with the reactive armor, it's funny to see him sniping, but hey, he's getting the job done. Well, let's go on with Waskin to start this round, uh, just because uh, obviously as an ace, he's working towards streaks. And he's got a, several first bloods to work with, very close to the reactive, also to picking up that scarab. Let's see how he opts to play this. It's going to be NV4 in hand. He gets Ooh. the window. He did see a naval cross. And he knows that th there's really no way to get out for a naval down there. I wonder if they try to push the agenda towards getting this first blood. He's just going to wait for the moment. Phase. Yeah, a naval calling it out. He's like, guys, I, I can't move from yeah. here. I need help. I need help. Now Enable trying to get out. Waskin reads it perfectly. Still gets the first blood again. And look at how close he already is just in round five to that reactive armor. This is a brilliant game from Waskin. If I remember correctly, wasn't his 16 and 2 game on retaliation as well? Uh, uh, I, I could be, I could be wrong could there. Be but, wrong. but he's had some monster, monster <laughs> games in search and destroy. He's on pace for another one. If this goes the distance, I mean, look at his kills compared to everybody in the lobby. He's yep. double or you know, quadruple everyone. Sonny B did sneak up through bike shop. And FaZe, actually, no idea he's here. Thankfully, they do have one pushing out of the bottom garage area that was Clayster. Could be the saving grace of a kill in this round. Oh, yeah, Clay. Clay saved his life for sure. Now you get Vision with the Scarab on two players. It's Wuskin by himself. You know, you're playing for that Trinity as well here. What, what are you thinking? Well, you're, you're tagged up pretty much immediately. What's the thought process here with a 1v3 in your closest streaks? Well, some players in this situation would try to jump off the map. <laughs> but with your being on a streak and one kill off the reactive, you might as well try to keep this one going. Yeah, it's just such a tough spot to play from here in market, right? When you yep. just have the narrow stairway, Zuma's inside wisely, just shoulder peaks and back up. Back up. Don't give him a chance to make a play, because like you said, you get a kill here. Oh, he that's actually gets the reactive. That, that's huge, but there's not enough time here. You can't make a play. Not only does he get the 75 points as well, and now here comes the push. Does get one, unfortunately. Faze making the right decision, and that's sending everyone at him. Do not challenge Wuskin one by one. Yeah, I mean, you, you, know, you obviously, with that time, don't use the reactive, but you fall just a little bit short of the Trinity rocket. 
That's a good job by Clayster, making sure yeah. he effectively trades the kills. It shut, shut down the streak from Wuskin. That was actually one of the rare scenarios where even if he does get that kill, he doesn't actually earn the final streak as well, that bombardment. <laughs> Typically, it's kind of you get one, you get both because of how close they are in score. This time around, though, it is Clayster who's going to be the one flying right up the map. They're not going to be ready for this, Th this is, at all. This is beautiful because this is where you would usually be able to do on defense, right? Before the, before the spawns change a bit, he gets here well much, much quicker, and there's the opening kill. They're not ready for this whatsoever. Drops down the trophy to protect himself. And he'll just wait things on out. Is he ready for this pinch, though? Doesn't appear so. Wins a second gunfight. There's already a player here for Fnatic. And, oh, wait, he doesn't go into challenge. He's one shot. He's going to try to get away. Clayster being fed kills right now in this round. Can he find the bombardment? Just needs one more. Here it is wow. around the back. And Clayster gets it all. He's on his feet. He's hyped. What a brilliant round. Because, you know, they move, the, they move the, the defense up, right? We were already talking about it earlier in the match. So how much more effective is overdrive there? I mean, oh, you yeah. can get into bike so quickly. Brilliant stuff from Clay. Folks, I, I think we're going to title that one, How to Not Try to Kill Someone in the Bike Shop by Fnatic. A and that is challenging one by one. I don't know why he gets a call that he's one shot, and he, and he runs away from in inside garage. They're just sliding and kill him. And, and look at this. He's like, you see the, the brilliant performance from Wuskin. Clayster's just like, what's up? He's now at 11 and 3. Jeez. Clay going off. It seems like, a, you know, Clay versus Wuskin warfare here in this one. But it is a Nabel finding the opening first blood for FaZe Clan. And again, look at the Trinity hovering on the map, keeping full vision of where Fnatic are. Clayster already pre-aiming this bottom bike shop area where you saw two players from this European squad. Now with the bomb planted, th this should be another easy round win for the side of face clan. I'm not sure if Wuskin was just spotted on the cross. There was one on bridge that may have seen him. He did get spotted, but doesn't matter. Able to win the fight with the NV4. The other phase player not close enough to actually close the gap and find the kill. You have reactive. You're in a 3v3. Does he check his close corner? Yes, he does. Able to win one more gunfight. Wuskin, 12 and 4. Been an absolute monster here. He has to work to defuse, but, but he's in a 2v2. They have no idea where Clayster is, which is which is the most interesting part of this. They're just going to go ahead, try Maybe to cover him. Um, there's the trade. Sunny B, though, can't get the defuse in time. Nice job by Clay to basically sacrifice himself for that round win. And look at it. What is it? 12 and 4 now after that round for Wuskin and for Clayster. These guys just putting on for the fans right now. Incredible. So Clay that entire round actually slow flanked even in this last scenario. He didn't give away where he was. He saw players and look at that. Even because Sonny B has one half a second of an idea where he's got to turn around and get the kill onto Clayster, that's enough time for Clay to get that kill on his teammate defusing the bomb. Well, he, he did it in a 1v1, right? Where he's able to pick up the kill on that A-bomb. He does it here now in a 1v2. Clayster doing it all right now for his squad. We're going to start off with Attach, who has FTL jump locked and loaded. If he needs to use it, call out comes through. That one is seen in curb, and they want to hit it. They want to find this opening kill, and they are able to find it. But at least Scraps able to pick up one kill, so it turns into a 3v3. A1 gets used in the back. That's a reactive from Wuskin. Wuskin guns one, another player half health. Not going to be able to find a second, but it's going to be a two versus two. And that, that, that kill right there is one that Sunny B just has to secure. Zuma was basically one shot. Sunny B was playing top patio. And somehow Zuma with the submachine gun still kills him. Clayster with this bombardment, though, could secure himself a 13th and 14th kill and the game victory if he clutches this round. Oh, I'll tell you what I want to see. I want to see him kill Tommy. We have a Clay Wuskin 1v1 with how this game has been going. But he's a Raptor on the back. Oh. He's going to spot him, but it's Wuskin getting another kill. <laughs> this is nuts, man. It most certainly is. Wuskin showing why he's arguably the best search and destroy player on this team. Beautiful positioning at that back tank with that NV4 cleanup. And oh, drops a gesture after it as well. It's like Clay. getting spicy. Clay, take that L. You're having, you're having a solid game. But the round goes to if, Fnatic. If this goes to round 11, Wuskin could push towards that 20 kill mark. Yeah, it is uh, certainly feasible here. Taking a look at the split on the minimap, Fnatic would have to come from behind here as they're still trailing by a couple of rounds. Who's going to be the guy to pick up the slack and kind of help Wuskin in this scenario? Tommy, not going to be the guy to do it. He's 3-8. and eight. Wuskin knows where the kill came from. The peak comes through. Nice job just backing up on scaffolding, making sure you don't give a freebie to Wuskin. Oh, and already the first two entry kills coming in for FaZe. 
Sunny B at least doing what he can to try to keep this even. I think they know that Wuskin's in this corner. You should see multiple players challenge here. Absolutely. He hasn't been before. Yep. To fight him. Yep, that's the Irad Azuma in his face. Sunny B now has to find three kills. He's already tagged up. The pinch comes in from Bedroom, and there it is. FaZe now secures a 2-0 lead despite a brilliant performance from Wuskin. On the other side, man, it was Clayster going man mode. Wuskin ends the game with more kills than his three teammates combined, but it's not enough as Poppy Clay gets the bombardment, the full streaks, and the map victory for FaZe. And now with that, I originally thought it's going to be a 3-1 FaZe victory with them dropping to Search and Destroy. Uh, I've got, I've, I'm changing it now to a uh, quick little sweep to start off day one. Yeah, and that's like, that, that map one, it, it was, it, it's painful for Fnatic. It's got to be tough to rebound. You, you, you mentioned it. You saw how Tommy kind of looked after that, just like he head in his hands, defeated. It's it's not easy to rebound from, especially when you have several young players on your team, when you're looking at the likes of Scraps yep. and Wuskin, the twin brothers. I mean, yes, you have the veteran in Tommy, but it's not easy to rebound. Wuskin does one hell of a job, but it's not enough to secure the victory. I think I'm, I'm feeling it with you. It, it looks like a 3 -0. Most certainly, and now we'll go into Uplink, which statistically has been Fnatic's worst game mode. That is why we are saying this now. FaZe, we know how good they could be in the respawns. Does that stay true to this weekend? Wondering what type of practice these guys got coming into this one. Either way, we'll have to find out for now that we are going to go to a quick break. When we come back, more action from the Blue Group. hear about the guy who broke both his left arm and left leg? Don't worry, he's all right now. <laughs> you didn't think that was funny? I thought that was good. Did you hear about the kidnapping at school? 
everything is fine. He woke up. <laughs> Did you hear about the two guys that stole a calendar? They each got six months. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. What, what did the janitor yell after he jumped out of the closet? Supplies. I don't even get, like, get it because he got supplies there. I don't so get he like, brings it with him. No, I didn't get that one. What happened to this redhead's gains and why are they non-existent? That's not even on there. <laughs> <clears throat> I broke my arm in two places. You know what the doctor said? Stay out of those places. <laughs> I don't Doc, get, doctors, why? I don't get that one either. Why did the pig leave the party early? Because everyone thought he was a boar. Why did Cinderella get kicked off the soccer team? Because she kept running from the ball. Did she want to go to the ball? What's Forrest Gump's password? One Forrest One. <laughs> that one was actually pretty good. Oh, they are clowns. That, that was fun, man. I love some of these pieces. Shout out to the, uh, you know, MLG production crew, uh, the content team, putting together some uh, some fun pieces with the players. But uh, I love that, man. A lot of fans only get to see him really compete, right? And yeah. Want to see a little bit more of the personal side of these guys. I know they went out and shot a cool one, Zuma. No spoilers yet, but you get to see a little bit more uh, uh, from his personal side as well, some of his experiences, some things he likes outside of the game. Yeah, if you haven't seen uh, Hot Mike, the show to kind of lead into the weekend on Thursdays, you know, one of our one of our goals big time has been to to show the players in a different light. You know, you see them in the professional setting, getting like hyped, this, yeah. talking about Cobb, but we really want you to see another side of them. So tune into Hot Mike as well there Thursdays. Oh, that's what it's about. You didn't talk about Hot Mike. I know, but the, the way you set it up was yeah. the exact same. <laughs> it was the exact same. I just, said it, I just said it better. Oh, okay. That's fine. I'll give you that one. Thank you. But uh, either way, one team that's saying things better is FaZe Clan with their gun skill. You like that throw to the to our next map? It's going to be Uplink in game number three. If you're just tuning in, our European squad fanatic are struggling at the moment to really keep up with FaZe Clan. Map one, FaZe were dominating up until Fnatic decided to shoot back. Real, really, yeah. Scraps and Wuskin, who were non-factors for the first couple hills of that game. Then game two, Clayster and Wuskin, it was basically a 1v1 battle for the majority of it. Clayster and crew come out on top, and now Uplink on throwback will be our third game. And, uh, you know, like you said, if you did just tune in, go watch that map one. Yes. Uh, that, that is one of the, you know, just incredible hard points that I think everybody at home, if you're a fan of competitive Call of Duty, should see. It was a beauty. But let's see what the young guy attached is able to do in the Uplink. It's going to be on throwback early. Uh, this is uh, this is a fun one. It, it can play very, very back and forth, but I just feel like FaZe has such a big edge in any respawn. I, I know I know Fnatic played them tough in the game one, but you also spoke to the Fnatic woes a little bit earlier. Oh, most certainly. And Fnatic, these guys crack me up, right? They get along so well together. I was talking to them earlier on, having some fun scrimming in the backstage area. What's great about the arena, there's like 24 setups here. We mentioned it last week. Yeah. You get basically six teams playing at once, only four obviously competing a weekend. So players are bouncing in and out. People were just getting their, their shots warmed up in eights, shooting bots, everything to get ready for this matchup. Fnatic, though, they were all smiles, joking back and forth. Absolutely are, but uh, your back's up against the wall now. Down 2-0, can you get it done? In the uplink, you, you can't have the slow start you did in game one. I mean, if you didn't have that slow start, you know, specifically for the Twins, like you mentioned, you, you, you probably win that game. I know breakout plays that way. It can be back and forth. We've seen so many comebacks. But if you go down early, I think, in the first half of throwback, they're just going to get hammered. You know, they'll start to feel defeated. You see the 3-0 looming in the distance. They need to start strong here to have a chance. And that's the leader, Tommy. You see him talking to the squad, getting them ready to go. It's time for it, baby. Game three. Throwback uplink. There's a look at your portal near that market side. I would say of the two areas, this is the one that's less scored on on this map. Obviously, that back baseball area is where teams can really begin to rack up the scores. Right there, your orange portal. Maven, is this one going to be close, or is it going to be kind of like what we saw from Cloud9 and Envy last week, the 24 to 2 slaughter? Uh, I, I, I don't think it'll be like that, just because I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to quit on this, which uh, you know happened to Cloud9 a little bit. You know, hate to knock the guys, but you can see that they tilted to the point that I don't even know if they're calling out to each other at that point. <laughs> okay, it was an absolute stomping. You know, maybe Aches can elaborate more on the desk. Oh, don't want to bring that one back up. Let's get into it, Tommy, from Fnatic. We'll watch him off the break with the Erad charging right towards this barn side. 
Tommy needs to have a big performance. Didn't do well in the search to destroy. I, to be fair, no one really did on the side of Fnatic outside of Wuskin, but hitting from the mid-tracks, he gets gunned immediately, but Sunny B there looking to trade it back. Unfortunately for him, it's Zuma getting two opening kills, and that's the type of player Zuma is, man. He's already got three, all four. Zuma shuts everybody down quickly. Zuma doing great stuff That's here. That's the earliest multi-kill I've seen, I think, in, uh, in in the start of a map. Tommy, though, doing his best to kind of get one of his own right there with four kills. And yeah, there you see it back to back. Four times multi-kill. Zuma with one, then Tommy with one of his own. The drone, though, has been pushed up a little bit towards Face's side, but that's the end of that push for Fnatic Wuskin, now dead. All right, things start to slow down a little bit now. Uh, fast early, now it's about mid-map control and trying to find a wave of kills here. So FaZe can push forward. This is a team, you know, I talked with Clayster. Uh, I think it was this particular map. They were scrimming against Luminosity. And one of, I mean, I'm curious what Clay is running here. I didn't see the rig draft, but he usually runs FTL. And it was Zuma really asking for him to switch and run Centurion. So you have that trophy. Because what happens when you get three or four down? You hit under the little mid walkways, basically on both sides. It's just nades flying from the sky. If you have that trophy to work with, makes the push a little bit easier. I'm curious if Clay, can we switch to him real quick? So he's actually be running overdrive. So they've really switched things around. Last time I watched them scrim, it was actually FTL. He was Using. Well, we'll see if it pays off right now. Currently, Clay sitting at one and three. Attach, who was watching that underpass area, turns at the worst possible time, tries to get away to top vending and does for a brief moment. And it's actually Attach who's running this. Yeah, so they did make a change because they were not running this during the scrim versus LG. But I heard Zuma and Clay really going back and forth. Zuma was flustered because he kept dying to nades. And every time they would toss him out, Slack had that in Centurion. That, that uh, trophy was there to slow it up. But let's see what they can do to try and Get back in this one. Fnatic with the early lead. Can they build on it? Yeah, the one-point throw earlier on, we didn't get to see it from Scraps, but it was during that first push where Tommy was able to clear out the FaZe Clan squad and force him to spawn blue. And we talk about how right now, FaZe from the less preferred side on this map, just still fighting for middle map kills, and they have been able to chain a few together since the start of this game. They absolutely have. The pressure is now going to build onto attach in mid-map. You saw one about to surround the window, one on the flank. That e rat melts. He does not get first shot there, but Sunny B getting loud. There's three down. Fnatic now in the push. Drone in the hand of Scraps. They're pushing from bowling side. One all the way in the back. That's going to be Clay finding the headshot, but the one-pointer is away, and they do connect. FaZe clears out their base, so there's not going to be any type of, type of setup spawn out in the rally. You got to feel pretty good right now if you're Fnatic. And that's Beautiful from Wuskin. Those two kills will now give his team the number advantage when fighting for middle map control. Can Attach get there in time already? Sunny B staying hot in this game. Nine and five, about to be the first player player to eclipse that 10 kill mark. Yeah, I saw Brycey tweeting out about it. He's like, I feel like, uh, you know, Sunny B doesn't get talked about as much. Because, you know, you have Tommy, who is, uh, you know, basically one of the winningest players all time in Europe. And you have the twin brothers who are really hot, real streaky. That can be the talk of the town. But he said he thinks their most consistent player a lot of the times is Sunny B. Well, we'll keep on board with him through this life, see exactly what he can do. Right now, trying to fall back, clear out of space. Thankfully, his teammates do, for the most part, cut him down. And I say we're going to watch him through this life. We're actually watching Scraps at the moment, yeah. so I couldn't be more wrong. It's all right. They both start with an S. I, there's, I understand the confusion, man. That's usually, that's usually the kind of stuff I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, still, a lead. Now we'll follow. Fanatic. Now we'll see what uh, Sunny B is able to do. Halfway towards this overdrive. He gets a spot on one. Obviously not going to be really gunning anyone at range with the ERAB, but good patience there to tag up the drone carrier. Is anyone there to finish the kill? He needs a little bit of help. They've got him pinned at Lemon. He's just, uh, did he not see him at all? He's letting his teammate try to find it. I think he was looking for the second guy. Yeah, both yeah, yeah. in that high wall run, unfortunately, just out of his sight. For the most part, though, Fnatic looking quite solid at the start of this game. Big thing it comes down to is the, the narrow lead they do have yeah. in slaying. Another thing as well is where they're getting the kills. For the most part, it's in the phases half of the map. There you go, the drone being pushed up. Can they get it on through for at least another one? This one should be quite easy. Wuskin though might go for the dunk, and I think he's got the angle he wants. There it is, four to zero, Fnatic. 4-0, they've got the edge. And you know, you mentioned the fact that you think, you know, uh, they're on the stronger side, right? So when phase switches, you give them a little bit of the edge. But what you have to consider is the fact that the second half is when those payloads are going to come into play. So when, when you're attacking from the weaker side, it's a little bit easier to get through when you have camo to use. You have overdrive to use. So despite the fact it's only a 4-0 lead, you feel pretty damn good right now if you're Fnatic in my eyes. Oh, most certainly. And I don't think phase are going to have enough time to get a score on the board at all in side number one. So all four players, 11 kills. It's not really like anyone's kind of fallen behind. It's not really like there's someone that's just completely falling apart. It's more just 
Fnatic doing a better job as a team to clear out the map, move the drone to where they want to, and, and put the points on the board. And remember, I know, I know you talked a little bit at, uh, at times this team can struggle at uplink, but again, in Dallas, they, they beat a team like Luminosity in a respawn. They beat them in an uplink. That, that, that's a that's an elite victory over a, you know, a top North American squad. They do a good job here shutting out FaZe in the first half. And the thing when I would watch FaZe play uplink where they struggle, they're, they're good at getting three or four down. They're, they're really bad at converting it into points, like just getting those one point tosses. And that's something that you got to think they've worked on. And on the other side, if Fnatic, you know, if they think it's a, a mode they've struggled on, what do you think they focus on over this path month preparing? Oh, it's going to be on uplink. Absolutely. And right now it looks like it's paying off. The first one we've seen from them here in the Global Pro League they're keeping FaZe scoreless through almost six minutes of play. And Abel trying to challenge from top train. Not sure if I agree with that decision. Is now the drone being pushed up? Fnatic are about to score on the side that FaZe were not able to in just 30 seconds. Six to zero. Such a one-sided uplink so far. And nice patient play there from Scraps. You know, I thought for a second he was going to go for the one-point toss, but he trusted in his teammates, gets the two-pointer through, and now they have a 6-0 advantage, completely in control over FaZe. And, you know, you, does that map one hurt? Yes, it did. But you know what the map one also says to you? We can play with this team. We can slay with this team. And now 7-0, Fnatic. Wow. FaZe just... They don't look like they're on the same page right now. They, they, they can't get any map positioning. This has arguably been one of their best positions yet to get a score so far in this game. And already two dead. Fnatic putting themselves in great positions. It's a Tatch all by himself. And there's no way he's going to get a point on the board. Four dead again from FaZe Clan. Now let's see what they do with this four dead. You know, obviously you can't just hit right now from the position they're pushing from. But let's see how they play behind it. They get drone four. Make sure they have four guns up. Try to trade kills back and forth. Waskin maybe should have had two there. But needed one more bullet. So defense from face still here, but it's Scraps able to snap on to a second. A drone in hands at Tommy. Tommy can't get it off. Scraps, is he still there to make a play? He may be, but the toss is out and able, able to clear. You still got three minutes here, man. It's very, very doable. I mean, just like Fnatic came back in that game one, you know the FaZe has the ability to get hot here. I think the big thing, too, for FaZe is while, yes, you do need to score seven points at least in three minutes to force the overtime, you need to get kills as well, especially towards the second part of this map when you're getting into the Fnatic base. You cannot just focus on the objective or else with how the spawns work on throwback, you will not be able to rally in those dunks. They need to not only clear out middle, but then clear out kills near this bowling side. And look again, it's Fnatic just keeping the drone away from their base. This is adding more and more time that it will take for yeah. FaZe to get a point at all. And also the really scary part is the slang that off. I mean, yeah, there's a, what, around a seven kill edge right now for Fnatic. But look at the actual payload. They're ahead so far in payloads because the scores, because the actual objective plays, they're about to get everything. They could actually put this game away with some nice objective play. Yeah. Camo about to come. If he gets a score here, it could be it. There, the oh. toss just a bit off. I don't think that's going to hurt them in the end, but still, you got to put that through. Hey, you know what? Look at how far away the drone is again. If I'm unable, throw it outside the back of the map. There you go. Play for the reset. FaZe need to convert a dunk right now if they want any chance to come back in this game. <laughs> and it's kills like that. That has been the whole map so far. That drop shot, that's yeah. just sick, man. Just guns, clay, and a, and a fight that you need clay to win, right? You have to get control there. Uh, it was something we saw, uh, you know, Assault from Cloud. I know we were on his POV a lot. If you're pushing that bus, you need to win those one-on-one -on -one gunfights to get the opening. As soon as clay loses that, things sort of start to fall apart. I'm seeing FaZe die one by one by one on all of these pushes that they go for. I have not seen an assist on, on the screen of FaZe in so long in this map. This one is done, Maven. Uh, Fnatic have picked one of North America's best apart. Yeah, it, it, they've destroyed it. I mean, this is just, it's not even close in the sense that, yeah, I, I know they have zero, so that sort of tells the storyline, but there weren't even, like, opportunities, oh, right? Oh. Like, nothing. They have had... like it was like they missed a one or they misplayed a dunk. They haven't gotten it, close. You know, it's like you're watching a soccer game, and it's one of those games where the entire game is played in somebody else's half. You know, yeah. you have, like, 20 shots on goal. Well, we the other Europeans, side, you have nothing. We have, we have Europeans watching, so it's a football match. Foot football. football! Please be respectful. I don't know what I just said. I don't know what you said either. We're going to move on. One minute left. Fnatic going to force the game four. We're going back to a hard point. It actually stays on this map, Maven. It will be throwback yet again. And this is what, you know, we also talked about kind of leading into the series, that this Fnatic team has proved stronger at playing against North American teams than maybe somebody like a, like a Millennium, uh, maybe a Red Reserve. They're up there with uh, they're up there with Splice. I mean, Epsilon, we still need to see. They haven't been really tested with this new squad against North American teams, but... Fnatic, they, they seem to have the recipe for success when they're on. I mean, they very well could have a, they should have a 2-0 lead in this series, or sorry, 2-1 lead in this series after this. Yeah, and now this is it. 
Do FaZe get a point to end this map? No, they can't even get the throw off in time. Tommy with two. It's Zuma by himself. Folks, we will be going to a game four of our first matchup of the blue group. Fnatic make Uplink look easy, surprisingly enough, with a 7-0 fully, that, that's the thing for me, fully controlled game. At not a single point was I like, oh, Fnatic, are gonna, they're, they're gonna let up a score, they're gonna let up a dunk. Instead, they're gonna go, they're gonna try to add insult to victory. What a performance right there from the Europeans. And, and that's one where you have to think it's, it's got to be a combination of both. One, FaZe having a, a horrendous map, and two, Fnatic just playing lights out because something was wrong there. You don't blank FaZe like no. that, it, it, whether it was a communication thing or you know, someone just not feeling right. Or maybe, you know, once they got the 2-0 lead, they felt like we did. You know, Merc thought 3-0. As soon as they went up 2-0, we thought 3-0. You got to think maybe in the heads of those guys a little bit, they're thinking 3-0, we got this, we're going to bury him. They come out maybe a little, little overconfident could be part of it, but... Yeah. They shouldn't have. <laughs> I mean, that's one of those maps that we'll reference for a couple events to come for Fnatic and their potential for that uplink game mode. That is a 7-0 win over FaZe. And now you're looking at a hard point again that was a five second difference back in map number one. We easily could be seeing a game five. I still talk about Splice beating NB 14-0 on pre-sync uplink in Paris because yeah. like they, it just doesn't happen a lot. You don't you don't hold a team to zero points. We'll be talking about Cloud9 losing NB 24-2. Like those, those types of losses, they just don't happen very nope. frequently where some team just doesn't have any sort of offensive output whatsoever like that brilliant map from Fnatic. I don't know if I saw a single payload from FaZe in that whole game. Well, that's that's what, like, it's like they weren't even getting outslayed that bad. I mean, it might have escalated after I mentioned it, but I think it was seven kills when I brought it up. But when you looked at the payloads, everybody was in, like, the, what, 50 to 60% mark kind of for FaZe, where everyone's about to get them for Fnatic. So that's where if you get a big early lead like that, that's where the snowball can come into effect. You see, you know, the camo used late in the game. Camo wasn't even a player in that because no. it was so one-sided. Tough map right there for FaZe, but we will move on now in our conversation over to that throwback hard point. Again, we mentioned some of the different little strategies that FaZe might try to bring out that we haven't seen yet from them up to this point this year in the Infinite Warfare season. Another thing as well, if you are Fnatic, you just need all four players to slay across the whole map, right? But we know this Fnatic team, they are very good at the likes of Search and Destroy. We've seen moments of brilliance from them in the respawn. Let's see how they got to this point to make it to the Global Pro League. Fnatic organization, one of the biggest organizations in esports, returned to Call of Duty for the first time since 2012, and they sought out one of Europe's all-time greats in Tommy. He was faced with the task of building a new team, and he did not disappoint. Fnatic entered 2017 with a roster of Tommy, Scraps, Wuskin, and Sunny B, and have emerged as a surprise team of the Call of Duty World League. Well, we better introduce this team first: Scraps, Sunny B, Tommy, and. Wuskin, Tommy, and what a captain. You, you couldn't wish anyone better to mentor new players into the scene. The Fnatic squad had very low expectations within the community entering this year. Their run began at CWL London, where they finished top eight. Next, they headed to Atlanta and pulled off a surprising top 16 finish while competing against the world's best. The following weekend was CWL Paris, where they were able to finish in the top eight, opening the eyes of their peers and the community. Fnatic just showed up this event. Apart from the last lesson, I had them taking it. Following Paris, roster mania ensued. However, they were one of the few rosters that decided to stand pat and improve as a team. They saw immediate dividends as the very next 2K, they were able to take first place. A top 16 finish at CWL Dallas cemented the fact that they belong amongst the best 16 teams in the world and a place competing in stage one of the Global Pro League. What a performance we see, 16 and two. Fnatic remain undefeated in Search and Destroy so far this weekend. Heading into the Global Pro League, keep an eye on Fnatic's Search and Destroy gameplay. However, in Dallas, it was actually a 75% win rate in Uplink that helped them get wins over the more established teams like Luminosity. If they can get back into dominant form in Search and Destroy, this is a team that can steal a win from just about anybody. Tune in April 28th to the 30th to see Fnatic begin their fight in Stage 1 of the Global Pro League. And you see the stat there for the uplink and also in the video. You know, we talked about the fact that, you know, over the course of the year, it's been SD that's carried them. They've yeah. struggled at times in uplink, but you work on a mode more and more and more. You know, we talked about the win over Luminosity. You see the 75% win rate at Dallas, and they show the uplink continues to improve here as they blank phase clan. It's one of those things, too, with teams, right, where maybe there's a weak game mode for them, so they begin to focus so much on it, then some of their other game modes begin to fall behind a little bit. Fnatic are so close right now to at least forcing in game five, we've already seen from them how close they can play phase and hard point. They need to do it right now. Clutch up on kills earlier in the game. 
I want to see that energy come back for FaZe Clan. They were they were quiet that entire map. Yeah, they really, really were. I mean, it's just what what do you get? What do you get motivated about? How do you get pumped up when you're just getting pummeled? When nothing seems to work? When you're dying one by one? When you can't get any control? There's no. It feels like you're playing the entire game from that the was, back foot. I mean, that was the crazy thing for me. Yes, Fnatic were doing great and they were in full command of that map, but not once did I see a full four man setup for FaZe where they actually executed towards the lane they wanted to, like even towards pushing towards bowling or back lemon. It was always like going towards underpass, trying to do something with the drone. Oh well, we're, we're, we're past it. We're going back to throwback now though for Hardpoint if you're just tuning in. This is the first match of four today. Up next, we've got quite the storyline between Rise Nation and EG, some former teammates battling it out. EG, we all remember the dramatic play back in Dallas to qualify for this Global Pro League, did all their hard work pay off That'll be next for now, though. We've got to crown a winner of this matchup. Will it be FaZe Clan or Fnatic? Well, let's kick things off with the boys of Fnatic. Going to start off with Sunny B. See what he can do off the rip. So you saw throwback last map for the uplink. They looked brilliant. Can they do it in hard point as well? Obviously, a very different game mode. But if you can keep close in game one and shut it down in the game three, Fnatic have to be very feeling very good about pushing this to a game five. And that's any that's anybody's game. I mean, these two teams have been back and forth against each other in search and destroy. Uh, you, you flip a coin for that game five in my eyes. Oh, absolutely. And one thing I do want to point out, I love the ERAD battle going on in the series between Sunny B and Tommy and the side of phased clans, Zuma and Detach. Especially we're going to see a lot of this map. A free two piece right there for Tommy an awkward positioning for FaZe, and still already the first hill held by Fnatic, the spawns to the next hard point held by Fnatic. This is a perfect start. And there you see the versatility of the ERAD. Yeah, it's not going to be as good as a K-Bar at range, but when you compare, I mean, as an SMG though, like getting a kill from window to window like that, basically, that's nuts. Yeah. You get the kill for Tommy, collaterals for the second. It's Fnatic taking an early lead, but now it's time to get set up in barn. And look, you've got Sunny B inside. You have Tommy pushing out grandmas. The spawn coming in in the back there for Wuskin. They look good, but it's going to be eyes on attaching crew as they try to break through. Zumo finds the entry kill. Attach can't win the gunfight in the back, but Clay there to trade it out. Yeah, and Enable's just going to focus his attention towards this hard point. I will have to agree with Scraps here. He's just going to back on out, give that up. Don't try to challenge right there. You've got no help from your team. Instead, wait for them to come off spawn. He's already made it across hill. He's going to give up 10 seconds to ar arguably get the next 30. Smart play from him, and, and you can just tell the veteran leadership on this team continues to pay off. Well, no, no one can hold Beautiful Barn. job. Beautiful no one, job. No one can hold Barn whatsoever, apparently. It was yeah. Zuma getting an opening kick to break in. Then I think he was the first one to actually drop as Fnatic busted back through. A uh, back and forth first Barn. And, you know, here, Statue, a lot of times where the game is going to be decided, no one seeming to be able to lock it down very well early. I love it, man. Even bringing out the RPR, Evo trying different things in this first matchup. Scraps now, the first one here for Fnatic towards this new hill. If you look at the minimap, though, there's nobody else to really back this one on up. Thankfully, his brother and Wuskin does get a kill. And again, on rotation, it's Fnatic all over the kill feed. Fnatic finds everyone. I think Zuma was the last phase uh, player remaining there. I, they have a bit of a split spawn working right now because everybody's all over the map. Just trying to get control here of bike path. Tommy comes back in. You've got the setup there. So they're actually spawning blue and the other team controlling buff. Well, so this is, this, is what, this is what's going on with throwback, though. It, it's a map that I talked about with Clayster where it's sometimes very hard to call exactly where the spawns will come in. You can get split spawns many times, especially on this bike path hard oh, yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. You've got to know that even the slightest bit of different positioning will completely flip the spawns on this map. One thing I do want to point out, in hard point number one, Wuskin and Scraps started a combined 6 and 20. Right now, they're a combined 19 and 13. And this is a map where I talked about, Clay, specifically this hard point. If you push forward just a bit, you can split spawn it. So the thing he's preaching to his players is hold a side. Just hold one side and try to play from there. You've seen since they got a bit of control, you've had nobody really cross the back. It's all been controlled for the bus side of the map. And now we're going to rotate out. It's Attach and Zuma finding kills. Statue set up, but Tommy actually gets in behind. And Tommy finds an opening kill. The team spawning blue at the top of the mini map. Now everyone going to collide. Nades out, soaring through. Bullets everywhere. Who's going to come out on top here for Statue? Wondering if FaZe can't win these gunfights. Do they wind up bringing in a streak into play. We just saw Attach 
who only got five kills on that streak, but he juggled the hard point so many times to wind up getting his team those streaks there. He does actually kill off Zuma, but kills three on Fnatic, a perfect example of where streaks can come into play. Yeah, we'll, we'll take we'll take Zuma's sacrifice to pick up three kills with the Trinity as he keeps going. He's got Bombardment still to go with. 15 seconds left in Statue as FaZe still Ooh. fighting from behind. Fnatic proving they can hang. Oh, I, I love it. More than hang. This, this is what it's all about. 93 to 66 currently the score. The end of the first rotation will be in favor of one of Europe's best in Fnatic. And still, they're getting aggressive towards phase already towards back bar. And, and how how much has it already proved through the first couple of weeks? Like how, you know, we've got the 16 best teams here, right? You, you saw Mind Freak, even though they only got a victory, they played very, very tough in a lot of those matchups. If you're Fnatic here, you're taking FaZe Clan to the wire. And, you know, a lot of people might have had Fnatic in that four spot. I, I've seen them as high as second is two through four, almost impossible this week. But, man, I don't know that many expected the series to go like this. No, and this is exactly what was talked about. You want to you wanna think about that map count. How many times last week did we talk about, you know, if Envy in that final series, if Envy against Splice lose one map, they don't get the first seed. It comes down to those kind of head-to-head -head matchups at the end of a weekend. So taking one map even off phase could be the difference later on in a second or third seed for this team. Well, Tommy and crew now coming off of spawn. We'll take a look at the mini-map as they're going to be hitting courtyard heavy. There's one in the back. That's Clayster getting a kill and managing to stay alive. Clay getting two kills on the rotations. We're getting back the bar. Clay finding three now. He was five and 16 up to that point. Those are big kills to allow you to set up in barn. That was phenomenal stuff there from Clayster. Yep. Nice job locking down an entire half of the map for his team. And now Fnatic, they realize where Clay is. They are avoiding that like the plague. Two do, do go down to the K bar of Enable. Phase now as close as they've been to taking over the lead in the last four minutes of play. And remember how back and forth Barn was the first time. This can be the difference maker a lot of times. No one's getting time right now. Someone, please get in the hard point. Actually, okay. Phase has been the kind of juggling ooh, in and ooh, out ooh. here, not finding time, but Zuma going big up close and personal with the rat. Zuma getting it done now. 20 and 13. The submachine gun duos leading Phase in slaying in this map. Again, a combined 11 straight there Zuma just died but FaZe had three players on a pretty good streak right there a big reason why they got a full 60 on bar and Clayster you know playing a little bit greedy with the streaks you saw the warden there he was expecting to have a strong map he didn't start well but he's on the five streak now if he can keep building those you know I think he had what Trinity bombardment and the warden to go with that could be the difference. We'll stick with Clay. He's at range with the MV4. First, Tommy, perfect shots there as he melts him dropping. You're playing around the streaks right now. You're so close from getting some very deadly abilities here. That'll, uh, that could shut down the game, but this is close. And this is a perfect spot for Clay to be in. He is not worried about getting flanked for the moment. Now, FaZe will begin to push the agenda and watch your mini-map. You will see these spawns flip now. Everyone from Fnatic being spawned out towards this back bowling side. I'm actually surprised to see Clay keeping such an aggressive hold right here towards this front side of the map with the streak he's on. But that was that was beautiful stuff from Clayster and, and Cree. You know, they, they, they get a couple kills, they push through. You want to hold this side for Statue. And now this is very similar oh. to what we saw them doing. One more bullet and the streak may have continued. But what a tear from Clay. It's almost wild to see him 12 and 17 after going on a seven streak. Yep, uh, it shows us how poor of a beginning he had. It was one of the major reasons why FaZe were down by 50 seconds earlier. Now with their largest lead of the game, and they look to increase it right now. Streaks again crashing down from the sky through tr two Trinity Rockets right now from FaZe. They've gotten six kills on this baseball hard point. Yeah, and this is, this is three almost perfect hard points in a row, right? From, from barn to bike path, now to statue. Faze is there early. They're locking it down beautifully. And like you said, Attach gets the three kills of the Trinity. Clayster now again. They both come through at statue. Faze doing a beautiful job as they are looking to close the door on Fnatic. And this is what makes Faze such a scary team in hard point. Think of what we've seen from them so far in the second rotation. Even the FTL jump coming in, it's not enough to crack the code to break this setup for Faze. Clay still staying alive. Back to back, six plus streaks for Clay. About to make it seven. There it is. Kleister with eight now in a row. This man was five and 16, now 20 and 17. It, it reminds you a bit of the game one where Wuskin started slow, came alive and brought his team back into it. Clay starts five and 16 now on a tear with this eight streak. But I do want to bring up think of the last three hills. When FaZe get early control and they have the, the, the setup on rotation, they get almost the full time in the hard point. Now just two and a half kills away from earning himself that warden. 
a kill and an assist is all he needs. Playster still staying so aggressive, and it's not even like how he's playing it, it is selfish. He's still getting himself in the right position on the map, looking for more and more one assist away from getting out the Warden now. We haven't seen a Warden in quite it is. time. And he's bringing it in. We go. 24 and Whoa! 17. 13! 13 streak for Clayster. This is nuts. Oh, finally Scraps kills him, but the damage has been done. I want someone to go look up the scoreboard from when Clay was 5-17 and 17 near field to now where they are right now. I would say, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I got the analyst looking at me like, let us do that job, Jack. Save that note for us. I'm going to stop talking about it. The analysis, I'm sure Fine. you'll get it I get done. it. But all you need to know, Clayster puts on a show here in the game four. But Fnatic, not out of it yet. Can they build the comeback here? And look at the overall slang. Everybody positive from FaZe Clan. Clay, and you know, the, the big thing too is Clay's your hype guy, right? So if he's having a good map, man, everybody can thrive off of that. Ironically enough, this is the worst hill that Clay could have called the Warden in on. It's inside Barn. It's not doing anything for him on the map. It doesn't even know where to go because there's there's really no one for it to target right now. Yeah, now it's starting to rotate over. There you go, over. finally. You see, Tommy, the shots coming in from the Warden on the kill feed. The Warden finds the kill, but still, Fnatic holding strong inside. Trying to line up a couple. I thought he'd get at least oh, one kill there. there. But the kill feed, all red, all face clan. They bring out the reactive as well. This one looks like it should be done on this bike path. Hardpoint already two red arrows there for FaZe. And they're going to continue to pressure Zuma nearing 30 kills in this game. The rest of FaZe, all at 27. What a slang performance from them. So remember last time what we saw here, FaZe would find an opening pick and they push through. There's two. They still have a lot of time to work with, but they're going to want to fight for the opposite side now. Zuma's starting to push forward. They want to flip the spawns. They're still spawning in the back, but you see FaZe starting to charge G -G. on forward. Zuma in this corner. He's set up. They don't need another statue hard point. FaZe gets it done on the back of an all-star performance from Clayster. We saw two different sides of Clayster there. Something mid-map got him angry because he decided to start shooting back. We can't reference it enough, the score difference. I know our analysts will talk about it. There it is, folks. Your first series done and dusted. FaZe Clan beat one of Europe's best three to one in our best of five series. But again, one and four, man, they're like mirrors, just so, you know, kind of opposite the sense that Wuskin starts slow, Fnatic down big, they come back into that game. On this side, Fnatic up, Clay having a horrible game. He comes alive and it turns around. Just the performance that Clay did is a, maybe a once, a once a weekend type performance. You don't see stuff like that in insane stretch there from one of the game's best. Already, what, a, a five second hard point at the start of the series. The S&D, we had two players with 14 plus kills. The uplink was a shutout for FaZe. And then in the end, a warden drop from Clayster. One of the best turnaround performances I've seen in a map so far in Infinite Warfare. Great series to kick off the weekend. I'll tell you what I love from Fnatic, though. You know, if they're going to play FaZe that tough, specifically, I think, in hard points is where they're going to need to find the victories, obviously, after seeing that series. If they play FaZe that tough, you got to think. They can beat EG. They yep. can beat Ryze in a hard point Absolutely. if they can play like that. Impressive stuff, I think, from both sides in a series where you know, pretty much everyone I saw was taking it 3-1, 3-0 for FaZe Clan. Fnatic, you look strong, but uh, just not, not enough. Not enough in the end, but we do have the man who dropped the Warden on the main stage. He's on the floor with Mr. X. Thanks,